friends. Hello. Hi, Googly. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. And all of our friends who've tuned in to Bee Bear Book Club, where we're learning a lot about books. Mm -hmm. And about authors, too. Mm. This week's book is about Clorinda, a cow that flies wow. where she wants to fly. She might have a little bit of trouble. Do you know she has some friends? That's good, you should have friends. Can you tell what one of her friends is? Let's see here. Oh, it's a pig! <gasps> it is a pig. You might see a pig on the inside of this book mm -hmm. when you're looking at Clorinda. Does the pig look very happy? The pig looks kind of worried. The pig might be worried. Mm. Why do you think that is, Googly? Mm. Breakfast! <laughs> <gasps> we'll find out when we hear this story. Will you watch with me? Of course. And here we go. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Come and take a look. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all read a book. We can read along. We can sing some songs. We can learn a play today. Take a look, it's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all read a book, it's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all have some fun, it's the Bee Bear Book Club. Welcome everyone. Hello friends, and welcome to Bee Bear Book Club. My name is Bob Knurk. And I am going to read a story with you today. The name of the story is Clorinda Takes Flight. I am the author of the story, which means that I wrote the words. Stephen Kellogg is the illustrator of the book, which means that he drew the pictures. Today's book is about a cow who wants to fly. Let's see what happens. Clorinda the cow took the sun now and then in back of a friend's house, the farmhand named Lynn. When a swallow swooped by, though, she leaped up to follow. Do you guys know what a swallow is? That's a kind of bird, right? Yeah. She raced past the barn, out the gate, down a hollow. A hollow is where you go down a hill and then come up another one. Oh, to fly, what delight, what a treat, what a thrill, she cried as she reached the tip top of a hill. Goodbye, graceful swallow. How sweetly you soar. I've never, not once in my life, soared before. But I want to be free, like you birds in that sky. And I promise you now that I will learn to fly. Clorinda ran straight to her friend, the pig, Hop. She said, I must fly. But the pig told her, stop. We all want to fly, it's a dream we all share, but please, my good friend, a cow in the air. You haven't got feathers, Clorinda, nor wings, and to fly, I assure you, requires such things. Clorinda's eyes brightened, she said, please explain why a cow isn't able to fly her own plane. What plane, asked the pig. He was clearly not thrilled. But the cow very cheerfully said, one will build. She danced to her truck with her face all aglow, so happy the pig couldn't bear to say no. I knew I could count on you, Hop, said the cow, and Lenny will help us. Lenny is their friend who's the farmhand. And Lenny will help us, I'm sure he'll know how, to cope with a problem if one should arise. Like you, my good friend, Lenny's kind and he's wise. They drove to the dump and found boxes and cases they thought they could use for the struts and the braces. Struts and braces are parts of the plane. You have to have them on the plane or the plane won't fly. So they're going to make the plane out of, out of boxes and stuff. The wheels they needed, they couldn't find cheap, so they borrowed a pair off of Lenny's old Jeep. To cover the wings and the long fuselage, they stripped the tin roof off of Lenny's garage. 
the motor they got from Len's washing machine after first making sure all his laundry was clean. And finally, the friends with some turns on a screw got the prop fastened on, and with that they were through. The prop is a short way of saying propeller, which is what flies a plane sometimes. Len, Hop, and the cow made a very good team. The guys kept her working, and she helped them dream. Time for the test flight. Let's put on our goggles, Clorinda declared as Hop wiggled the toggles. Toggles are those little switches you can wiggle like that. Len cranked the engine. It gave a loud cough. They roared through the garden, and then they took off. Hooray, cried the cow as they flew through the skies. Her co-pilot whimpered and covered his eyes, for the wings had come loose, and so had the rudder. The plane gave a wheeze, and it started to shudder. Downward they plunged, but by some lucky stroke, the plane came to rest in the top of an oak. The oak is a great big tree, so the plane was safe when it landed. Poor Hop. He was gasping and clutching his heart. Clorinda, he said, I believed from the start your dream was delightful but slightly unsound and that creatures like us ought to stay on the ground. Clorinda said sadly, I guess that is true. Flight is the thing that a cow cannot do. And yet, observed Lynn, this is Lynn, see what he's doing, he's helping the cow get down. And yet, observed Lynn, as he helped them descend, your plane did take off, so I'd say, as your friend, your goal was achieved. You guys did it. You flew. Well, murmured Hop, I suppose that is true. Clorinda cried, bravo, hip hop, hooray. With the pig's help and lens, she was well on her way to planning the next flight, and then several more. What helpers, she said, that's what friends are for. They constructed a rocket. The rocket went <laughs> That's the noise a rocket makes when it runs out of juice. But that didn't matter. The friends wouldn't quit. A copter, they cried. They all worked nonstop. It went up with a roar and came down with a plop. Then over the barn rose a glorious moon. It was round. It was full. It was like a balloon. A balloon, the cow shouted. That's perfect. Oh, wow. Yes, cried the pig. Let's get started right now. There on the wash line are clothes of all sorts. We can make our balloon out of socks, sheets, and shorts. A balloon, observed Len, as you may be aware, in order to rise, we'll need lots of hot air. With glasses and mirrors, the air could be heated. They worked until dawn when the job was completed. The magnified light Len supplied did the trick. The balloon filled with air, and Clorinda said, quick, into the basket. She clambered aboard, hop squeezed in behind her, and upward they soared. Where's Len? They both said as they rose in the sky. Len was still on the ground. He was waving goodbye. For in all their haste about what they should do, they'd forgotten to wait until he climbed in too. Through cloud banks and rainbows, past ravens and cranes, they flew over mountains and rivers and plains. Their hearts swelled with joy in the wide, immense sky. Oh, hop, sighed Clorinda, it's lovely to fly. New York and the ocean both sped by, and then they heard the rich chimes of the famous Big Ben. Big Ben is this clock that you see here, and it's in a country called England, which we'll find out about in a minute. The Big Ben of England. In the crowds down below, people yelled, splendid and jolly good show. They heard drums, fifes, and trumpets, and bagpiping men. Clorinda said sadly, we should have brought Lynn. This concert is something he'd love to attend. It's great fun for us, but I do miss our friend. 
As for Lin, in his dreams, he had never foreseen that his friends would appear on the news with the queen. The queen told them, bravo, never before have a cow and a pig ballooned to our shore. So kneel, noble heroes, while we, with our sword, grant you both knighthood, now name your reward. Now knighthood means that, when in the olden days, it meant that you had a suit of armor and you were like a soldier for the king. Now it means that the queen really likes you a lot. So that, that's what knighthood means. The cow thought and thought, and the pig scratched his head. They whispered a moment, then both of them said, our helper was Len, and how happy he'd be if we could bring back to him some of your tea. How kind, said the queen, that you thought of your friend. As for me, I must say I'm delighted to send through you to this Lenny the very same tea he'd get if he came for a chit-chat with me. Her Majesty's staff helped them load and untie and cheered as they watched the balloon climb the sky. Heading west, ever west, over seas laced with foam, they caught sight at last of their own farmland home. There Lynn, with a welcoming cheer, lent a hand and helped them touch down on the best place to land. They gave Lynn a hug, and then the cow with a grin presented the tea in its decorative tin. Tin is another way to say can. Sometimes in England they say tin first. And they promised their friend that the next time they flew, they'd take him along so he'd meet the queen too. And under the stars, in the moon's silver beams, they talked of adventures, of friendship, and dreams. And that's the story of Clorinda Takes Flight. So, thank you for sharing this story with me. Now that you have uh, heard the story, think about how sometimes when you try something, it doesn't always work out at first. But isn't it a good idea to go back and try some more? What do you guys think? Go back and try some more. Go back and try some more. I think you're right. Googly, did you like that story? That was fun. It was a great story. Clorinda had lots of ideas. Yeah. She did something in this story called construct. She constructed some things. Oh, yeah, that helped that, her to fly. What do you think construct means, Googly? It, it means to, to build something. <gasps> I think that's right. Mm -hmm. If you get to look at this book again, Watch for that word, mm -hmm. construct. Construct. Have fun. Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about the letter M. Mm. Now, it's useful in all kinds of words, like mouth. Ah, mouth. <laughs> or mix. Or mom. That reminds me, I've got to send my mom a letter. And that's another fantastic M word. Mail. Ah, mail is a really fun word. It means somebody sent you a letter or a package and a mailman or mailwoman delivers it right to your door. Let's see what I got. Mm -hmm. Open this up here and... Well, I guess that's another fine M word. Monthly bill. <laughs> hello, friends, and hello, Vanessa. Hello. How are you? Now, now, I, I hear you might be very helpful with a problem I'm having. Tell me your problem. I can't get to sleep. I, I don't know if it's a lot of coffee or just I've been watching too much television, but I have a, a dickens of a time getting to sleep. That is a shame. Well, yes. let me think about this for a minute. You know what? Let's try a nursery rhyme, and maybe what we'll do is we'll turn it into a chant, because the chant, when we repeat it over and over again, might just make you tired enough to go to sleep. That's a, that's a hot ticket of an idea. All right, so all let's, right, let's try. try it out. So let's kind of feel the beat here. We'll go like this. Oh. Get comfy, all right? Oh. Get comfy? Yep. Okay, You're good. fine, bear, right? The bear's fine. Yeah, we're good. So oh. it goes like this. And you might know it, too, so sing along. 
Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. You want to try say that with me? Sure, Grandpa sure. Lizard? Okay. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. You got it! Hey, so I'm going to add some hand motions just for the fun of it, okay? Okay. So I'm going to play like I'm playing the fiddle. Oh, so okay. Like that, so. Okay. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Yeah, the dish ran away with the spoon. Excellent. Let's try that again. Okay. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Yeah, the dish ran away with the spoon. Call me crazy, Grandpa Lizard. Let's turn this into a little song for you, okay? You're crazy. But let's so, do it. Yeah, we'll do it. So we'll sing a melody to it now. Here we go, like this. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. Singing that one. Let's try it again. Okay. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Yeah, the dish ran away with the spoon. So Grandpa Lizard needs to go to sleep, so let's sing it a little more quietly for him, okay? Ready? Hey, diddle, the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name you Matthew. It's a good name. All right, Matthew, we're going to play catch, and then I'm going to, we, we, can, we can roll you down a hill. Mm. Could be pretty fun. Oh, hello, Blinky, brother of mine. How are you this fine day on Zebulon? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. This? Mm -hmm. This is a little something I picked up on my last trip to Earth. Ooh. It's called a ball. <gasps> yeah. yeah, and I learned all about them. For instance, a ball is a shape called a square. <laughs> what? <laughs> What do you mean it's not a square? Of course it is. Balls are square. I'm sure of it. What? What do you mean squares aren't round? Of course they are. A circle? A circle? Are you sure? You sure circles are round? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I mean, you were right about not using the rocket fuel as toothpaste. <sighs> My mouth hit hyperdrive before the rest of me that day, I will tell you that. Mm-hmm. But, okay, okay. Answer me this, Mr. Smarty Eyeballs. Mm -hmm. If this is a circle, then what the heck is a square? No, he just left. You hear that, Matthew? He just left. I guess I was right. I just... That is a square? Uh -huh. 
That thing is a square. Well, what makes that a square and this a circle? Four sides. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. The square has four sides. Right there, one, two, uh -huh. three, four. And this guy. Uh -huh. This guy's got no sides. So that must be a circle with no sides, and this has got to be a square with four sides. Well, I get it. But answer me this, Mr. Smarty Eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Can I use the ball as toothpaste? Come here, Smarty. Mm -hmm. I can feel my mouth getting cleaner already. Ready, spaghetti? <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, Neil, somebody. One, two, wait, wait, wait. What? what we, we gotta say what we're doing. We are counting to 20. We're counting to 20. All right. So let's uh, let's count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, twenty. Twenty. All right. That that was pretty. Hey, you want? Can we do it together? We're gonna count to 20 yeah, fast. together and Super fast. fast. Super fast. Well, you wanna hear the fastest I can do it? What? 20. What? That was, that was, okay, let's do it together. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Let's spell some words. Hola, everybody. Hey, guys. Good eye, mates. Hey, y'all, wait up. What y'all gonna do today? We're gonna spell some words. Ready to spell our next word? Yup. B. Bow or boo? Actually, that's how you spell boo. Oh, don't scare me like that. Book. Book. Goodbye, book. See you later. <laughs> that was so cool. I really learned a lot today. That was great, guys. Let's count to four. Uh-uh.
and book distribution for the Bee Bear Book Club is supported by a grant from the Brookline Community Foundation. Puppets designed and operated by Dogtoon Media and the Puppet Showplace.